This episode of Bullet Heaven was made possible by Chagata Games. Shooting game fans on a budget know by now that there's a huge treasure trove of games on the Xbox Indie Games market, with a pretty great selection of great blasters with everything from old school classic nostalgia trips to shmups with super smooth 3D graphics engines. But where to start if you're new to the X-Wig scene? Well, one of the most recent releases to the X-Wig market is Nandayana, the first Sutra, a horizontal shooting game by Swiss developer Chagata Games. Taking inspiration from the spirits, demons, and deities of Japanese mythology, Nandayana definitely has some solid shooting chops. Let's take a closer look. Nandayanen, or loosely translated What the Hell, is the story of a Tengu named Tenguman, who is awakened when the Okai, an army of mythical creatures, has taken power and are running rampant. To make matters worse, Miss Inari, a kitsune, is stolen away. Tenguman sets off to defeat the Okai and retrieve her. Thus, the game begins. As with most horizontal shooting games, typical 8-way control and rapid shots are at a player's disposal to shoot and destroy the mythical enemies you'll square off against. But there are twists to the control scheme. Players will also have access to Tengumen's friends, a trio of crows, to assist in battles. Tapping the B button will summon them, and a short, intense blast of energy will spring forth to heavily damage foes. If the B button is held, Tengumen will charge up to perform his own blast. However, this technique can only be performed so long as one of the crows remains. Otherwise, a cooldown period will engage, and no charging can occur. During cooldown, Tengumen's hitbox will turn from yellow to purple. Tengumen's hitbox is also very small in relation to his size. This directly affects the defense dynamics in Nandayanan, since while the charge button is held, tapping for it will allow Tengumen to deflect enemy shots back at their sources. Reflected shots will increase your shot's power and score, indicated by a small gauge at the bottom of the screen, and a change in the shot's hit sound. Knowing when to deploy your crows and when to charge is crucial to defeating the tougher enemies in as timely a manner as possible, which have further reaching implications. Tango Man also has a bomber attack at his disposal, but it doesn't do a lot in terms of damage. Rather, it is more or less defensive in nature, used to clear out enemy shots when it gets a little too hectic. An auto bomb feature is also present, which reduces the bomb stock sharply if it's deployed. Additional bombs can be obtained by defeating certain enemies. Certain enemies also contain one of five sutras. These sutras can be collected to engage a super beam that is unleashed at the beginning of the stage and boss battle, making things drastically easier. Of course, more work will go into finding and collecting these sutras throughout the stage, so your effort will basically even out in the end. The bosses can be quite challenging though, especially on normal and hard, so getting all the help you can is a good thing. New obstacles will constantly be introduced throughout the game. Enemies with barriers will appear that will require specific techniques to break. Orange barriers require charge blasts, while blue ones will be dispelled with reflected shots. Getting through on one credit will be a challenge with Nandayanen's fair difficulty. While the control on the whole is really sharp, the defense technique can be a little fussy, especially if you're only using a standard controller. We have pretty fast thumbs, but it wasn't quite enough to escape death a lot of times. It is actually recommended by Chagata Games to play with an arcade stick to get the timing right, and it really does actually make a rather big difference. But there is one really big drawback to the whole thing, despite Nandayanan's solid gameplay and nifty mechanics. There are only three stages. A stage set of five or six could have made this game really shine. So what does the scoring add to all of this? The scoring in Nandayanen is fairly simple in a lot of ways. Basically, the main objective is to keep your reflex shot percentage bonus as high as possible for as long as possible. Knowing how to defeat as many enemies as possible through the use of charge shots, pods, and reflection is key, since collecting all of the items throughout the stage will come together for a nice boost as well. 
All of the items collected and stored come together at the end of each stage. The number of lives, bombs left, sutras, and shot level all contribute to the overall score. Simple though it may be, there's a rather cool hook to it all. An online leaderboard can be accessed via a QR code that can be read with most modern phones. Nice touch! Nandayanen has a pretty fantastic presentation to supplement its fleeting, though great, gameplay. For an indie game specifically, the backgrounds and overall character and monster design, perhaps with the exception of the first end stage boss, are pretty amazing with great use of coloring clearly defined bullets that don't get lost in the backgrounds or amongst the enemies. The painted backgrounds not only add a layer of believability to the Japanese mysticism, but also feature some rather neat environmental effects. Dynamic bloom lighting that casts shadows when elements pass through them, and great fog and cloud effects really stick out. The animation is also pretty good, with a decent amount of frames present in, well, everything. On the sound front, Nandayanen's music, composed by Gudi Guru, takes traditional style shamisen heavy tracks and mixes them with urban hip-hop and dubstep to form some seriously neat tunage that basically sets the stage perfectly throughout the game. Add to that, good use of sound for everything from shots to impacts, item collection and enemy death, and the sound in Nandayanen is pretty good stuff. There are some samples that don't sound especially great though, specifically the crackling sounds used in the menu selections. Thankfully, the in-game stuff is pretty safe. There is one other minor hiccup. The refresh rate on Nandayanen shows very obviously on the screen, especially when the screen is fading. It's a little irritating, but otherwise harmless to the gameplay. So in the end, just how does Nandayanen the first sutra stack up? Let's take a look. Most of the controls in Nanda and N are sharp and work well. The shot counter mechanic is a little too picky with anything but an arcade stick though. The challenge in Nanda and N is moderately high, but mostly because the counter system is a little too fussy. A little practice, and an arcade stick, can go a long way. At only three stages, Nanda and N left me wanting much more. It seems as if there is more to come though. The sharp sprite art in Nanda and N is pretty good stuff, but I didn't really like the first boss. The painted backdrops are great, and the environmental effects, especially in Stage 1, are superb. The clever mix of traditional Japanese instruments and modern urban sounds are pretty great. The sound effects here are also good, with the odd effect not quite working out in the main menu. The counter system in Nandayanen is pretty intriguing, it just needs a little more fine-tuning. Collecting sutras to take a huge chunk off the stage boss's health is a sweet mechanic too. All in all, Nandayanen the First Sutra is a very solid game that deserves a good hard look, despite its woefully short stage set. If you're just getting into x this should be one of your first downloads after getting stuff from Zona and Mommy's Best Games. In the end, Nandayanen the First Sutra gets a 3.5 out of 5. You can download Nandayanen the First Sutra on the Xbox Live Marketplace for $2.99. PC strike your fancy more? No worries, it's coming soon to Desura. Word. Japanese Myth mythicism. <laughs>